This is a character analysis of Johann Liebert from Monster. This analysis will contain spoilers for the entire series of Monster, so if you have not seen the entire series, then do not watch this video. Before we start, I have to stress that I am not a professional on any level, but this was a very highly requested video, so I aim to please, and I'm going to try. <laughs> now, in my opinion, Johan actually has a surprisingly righteous personality, but he was steered in the wrong direction at a very young age. Because he was born and was raised in such impossible circumstances, he has a warped sense of justice and morals. Most of the things that mess him up can be rooted back to his mother's moment of hesitation when she jerked one hand to send one child, but then sent the other instead. She chose to send Anna, who went on to see some very horrific things, so you'd think that Anna would be the one who would come out of it all messed up. But Johan didn't really focus on the outcome of his mother's choice as much as he focused on the reason behind it. He didn't assume that his mother loved him more because she chose to send Anna to be experimented on. He instead chose to assume that his mother loved Anna more, but accidentally mixed the two of them up. Actually, he kind of assumed both, which was conflicting inside of him and ended up kind of tearing him up in these two different directions. It's kind of interesting that although he was born from the eugenics movement, which at its core just believes that it's superior, everyone in the movement is superior, yet he can turn around and go in the opposite direction and feel so very inferior. I assumed that Johan was toying with Tenma for kicks, which is why he allowed him to live and almost seemed to be encouraging him along. But Johan actually really did care for Tenma, because when Johan came to the hospital after he was shot as a child, Tenma operated on him, even though there was someone else at the hospital who perhaps is more influential. Johan and Tenma are actually very like-minded people in their sense of equality for everyone, but Johan chose to make his point through murder and manipulation. Most of what he did throughout the series was all about attempting to regain his own memories and find the mansion and then eventually find Bonaparte. With all of that accomplished, I think Johan was satisfied with how he had gotten to that place and where he was, and just wanted to exact his revenge against Bonaparte in the most meaningful way possible. Johan modeled himself after a character in a book who just ran from person to person and destroyed each life when he got there. And because he was going for that, he was ultimately successful in making his point. If he wasn't born with good looks and brilliance and charm all wrapped up in this tormented package, I highly doubt we would have gotten the same fearsome enemy that we ended up with. Johan will always be one of my favorite anime villains because when you get right down to it, he's just a guy. Or even just a kid. By the end of the series, I don't know if he learned anything because it's really hard to show a wrong person that he's wrong when he truly believes that he's right. In any case, this was a truly memorable and chilling character who rarely had to get his own hands dirty. It's hard not to be drawn in by the Johan gravitational pull, even though viewers know he's just a fictional character. Johan was kind of the perfect genius, and the series became that much better with him controlling it all. But anyway, that's all I've got for Johan from Monster. If you have any other suggestions for characters you want me to take a look at from Monster or any other show that I've been watching on my channel, then please let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Bye! But Johan actually really did care for... for... <laughs>